smarter than everyone, and I'm gonna prove it by talking about video games. Yes, welcome back to the fifth annual Jeff Keeley is not human, nor does he pretend to be- Oh shit, can you please stop, no, stop that, no, 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 that's polyester, ah fuck. Alright, let's say that from the top. Uh, so welcome back to the fifth annual Jeff Keeley is not human, nor does he pretend to be show, aka... Yoshi. Yeah. Oh, could my Western audience do me a massive favor and just ignore that last bit? Uh, during the break, this channel was bought out by the People's Republic. I'm not saying that I'm proud of the actions I have taken during my rise to power. All I know is that they were a necessary evil that had to be done, no matter the consequences. Also, I'll take the free PR where I can take it. That Reddit gold goes for miles. Oh, and uh, could you please forgive the red face? Uh, it's a bit warm in this room on account of my entire state being on fire. Why, oh, yes, and Deedles, and the single most commercialized and corporatized entertainment industry in the entire planet, and boy, frickles, I mean, what a lot of compliments today have There is only one award ceremony that stands above all the rest as the most commercialized, the most corporatized of all the other video game accomplishment ceremonies. I had a moment of realization, ignore me. Yes, boy howdy, it sure is. That's the right, Game Awards 2019. Brought to you by the sequel of the remake of Jumanji. Starring, joy golly gosh, that seven foot Samoan man sure is releasable. Which you can experience in a theater after you watch the Game Awards in the theater. Hallelujah, I could not engineer a more nothing of an evening. Fortnite makes no sense. Whatever, let's just get to the part where I swear a lot. So in order to really nut down why the the Game Awards is so terrible and pointless and stupid and smells a lot. Besides, of course, all the excessive advertising, the nominations that are largely terrible, seemingly without justification, Jeff Keighley being only vaguely human, and of course all the f cringe compilations, although in all honesty, this video is just going to be tackling exactly why the nominations are so terrible in the first place, and no, I'm not just lazily ADRing this bit in the 3 in the morning, shut up. We need to go all the way back to our most precious little soldiers in the field, people who get angry at IGN review scores. If you've already seen the donkey video, you already know what point I'm going to Make. But just to give you the Cliff Notes version, game journalism or news sites are basically big, giant, amorphous blobs, faceless, no individuality. So in practical terms, what this means is that the same eight out of ten that went to viciously masturbating over the corpses of Arabs twelve is not coming from the same place that gave a six out of ten to I was abused as a child and that's why I became an independent game developer or three out of 10 to God Hand. Actually, God Hand's kind of the perfect example of this because you've got the infamous review that came out in 2006, and then four years later, the writer of that article got fired. And then nine years after that, did IGN make a follow-up video essay defending God Hand with a completely different writer. Kind of just, it kind of illustrates the point that this video game got this arbitrary number out of 10 from IGN registered trademark means literally Jack Dicking for Nothing. If not for any other reason, just that in order to probably detain why this game got a number in the first place, you actually have to read the article associated with it. And by crikey f are you just not gonna do that? I mean, say what you will about Joey Tit f three hour video essay about Tifa's cup size, at least he's being redundant in a modern format. But how, when the Billy Blue Bollocks does this all tie back to the Game Awards? Well, you see, what the Game Awards does is that it takes the problem of games, journo, news orgs being faceless, soulless, amorphous blobs and kind of compounds that problem by taking 80 of the most soulless, most faceless, most amorphous blobs from all around the world and morphing them all together into one big giant Akira of safe, bland, predictable video game opinions. Also fun houses that why, why, what? And of course we mustn't forget the final cherry on the coffin, which is if you read the FAQ it says that clear as day that audience votes literally only account for 10% of the final verdict, which I know is roughly 10% more than the average democracy, and still, it just goes to show how I'm really ADRing this at 3 in the morning again, god damn it. So anyhow, I'd say I have fairly efficiently rambled my way into some sort of opinion-shaped thing, of which I have mapped out roughly why I personally believe that the Game Awards is not worth wasting your precious finite time on this precious finite earth. Thinking about, besides the game announcements of course, 
so just drop the whole business altogether and do something productive like Let's look at the nominations. But first, this video has been brought to you by NordVPN. Have you ever wanted to safely use and torrent off of the perfectly legal file sharing websites or browse illegal hentai without fear of persecution or <coughs> your kidneys being stolen by Russian organ harvesters? Then uh, may I suggest you try out NordVPN. <coughs> NordVPN is one of the world's leading fashion services and provides excellent speed and encryption. It's one of the best. It's so good. It's. I'll say anything to make this fucking stop. Oh my god. <coughs> You're only crippling yourself if you're not using a new VPN. And you need to make sure you have the best. So I recommend you go to. Oh, what the fuck am I supposed to say again? Go to nordvpn.org slash akindalwar or use coupon code akindalwar to get 81% off. In all serious, this is genuinely an excellent product. This is in fact my daily driver. It's a really good service. I highly enjoy using it. And it's fucking, I'm not 80, 80 houring this, I swear. Please, for the love of God, go to the fuck, go to the fuck website. It's <laughs> really good. Nordvpn is akindalwar. Oh my god, it's fucking hurt. Again, that link is nordvpn.org slash akindalwar. Link is in the description. Coupon code akindalwar. Alright, go back to the video. This fucking hurt. This is the 2019 nominations for the 2019 Game Awards. Let's just get to the point where they're wrong about everything. All right, game of the year. Why is this wrong? Looking at this list, I'd say there's a slight minor issue that I can't quite put my finger on. Hang on, I'm going to do some research here. No! It doesn't exactly reflect well on the year when the game of the year, the defining game of the year, the best game of the year, Jesus, is actually a PS2 game from 1998. I don't care if it's a reboot or a remake or Resident Evil 2. Hey, that's the game we're talking about. You can't have a game from the PS2 on your defining game of the year list. If anything, it just shows a lack of self-confidence. Like, yeah, we could have listed other games that came out this year, but, um... <clears throat> I, I, I prefer I prefer the remake, please. Like, sure, you can give it other awards. I've got no problem with other nominations it has received. And if someone was to come up to me and say, hey, there was no other game I enjoyed playing that came out this year more than the Resident Evil 2 remake, then I would be in no position to tell them otherwise. Not for picking the defining best, greatest, this is the game that defines the year. So it's everything else that's here. We have the one nobody played, the one everyone knows is going to win. You have the From Software game that came out this year, the highest selling Nintendo game that came out this year, and the token indie nom. But this one, thank God, is not too indie-esque, so we don't have to scrub ourselves afterwards. And, uh, yeah, give it to that one. That's the best one. Next, best action game. No, maybe, ha 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 ha, yes, of course, you dumb fuck, and I didn't even know these came out this year. And I'm pretty sure I played one of them. You know, the fact that this isn't just Devil May Cry 5 getting nominated six times is... It just kind of shows how weak this fucking thing is. Next, action adventure. Quite easily the most useless genre ever, ever coined, ever invented. And this is most exemplified by the choices of nominations. You have Randy Pitchford gets money from me mentioning this, so I'm not going to say it. Portal, but boring. Hideo Kojima's Breach the Confinement Chambers. A horror game from 1998. A Legend of Zelda game from 1993. And Dark Souls with Grapple Hooks. This is a dumb category, but which one do you think is going to get nominated? I'd say Sekiro most fits the genre category, but at the same time, Death Stranding is on the list. 
meaning that it definitely will win without question. Next, art direction. And why in the crispy mick fuck is there only two indie games here? This is like the one category that indie games get to shine without the need for affirmative action. I mean, say what you will about indivisible. Okay, I will. It's incredibly mediocre in every single sense of the term besides the art direction and the leg lady who I want to step on me. It deserves it more than fucking Legend of Zelda on the Game Boy from 1933, but in the Unreal Engine. Fuck off. Next, audio design. This is the category for fucking nerds and it'll get read out in the ad break, so who gives a shit? Yeah, instead of getting mad at the nominations, let's talk about a game that deserves to win the category. Have you heard about Ape Out? It's really good. It's a nice snacky little game that shows real artistic prowess between a handful of really excellent game designers. Like that fucking cunt face that made the shithead game. If I was to make a comparison, I'd say it's a combination of Whiplash and Dunstan Checks In. It's like a really short, excellent, snacky little game. Just a short, tiny burst of perfection. You're just an ape and you're trying to get out and all of your actions dictate the motion of the music. And it's like jazzy and fun and like really cool and excellent. You fucking try it, you... Luddite, cunt. Community support. Recognizing game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. Apex <laughs> Nope. <laughs> no, fuck it. Rainbow Six. Give it a Rainbow Six. I know jack shit about any of these games. I just hear Rainbow Six fans being the least mingy out of all of these. <laughs> Who the fuck are you people? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we reach the esports categories. I know jack shit about esports but i do know they make a lot of money so there's a lot of esports categories oh my god overwatch was nominated <laughs> fuck off like the only thing i know about esports is that oh, one event that happened this year in sydney where a counter-strike tournament and an Overwatch tournament took Sir, place next to each other in the same hall, and the Counter-Strike people got We're really fucking upset stairs. about that. <laughs> I love my country. Next up is best Nintendo game. You have Luigi's Mansion, another one, Wii Fit Adventures, the sequel to Mario's level editor, the one that's gonna win, and the one I didn't even know came out. Yeah, give it to Wii Fit, trainer. I don't give a shit. Best fighting game to come out. 2019, and you chose Jump Force as your nomination. Yeah, I'm nominating that one. Debut indie game title. Oh, yes, I, I love these. The first fledgling baby steps of a creative auteur's creative genius. Just the purest, unadulterated form of their vision. No hampering of... Without any hampering of sales projection, without it, without any hampering of sales projections, demographics, marketing teams, none of that. Just the purest, unadulterated form of an artist's creative genius. Love that. Love to see it. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Let me try that again. Fresh, which is trademark, indie game presented by Subway. Yay. So the only game on this list that I have actually played is My Friend Pedro. So I think the moral of the story of this should be vote for Disco Elysium. Please don't let the fucking duck game win, please. Oh yes, this is a great category. Game direction awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. So obviously they nominated for most innovative game titles, the PS2 game from 1998. Yes, I'm still on this. Fuck off, you duck. Fuck. Next up is games for impact. For a thought provoking game with a pro social meaning or oh, message, which means all the games nominated fall into one of three categories. They're about mental illness, meaning you can't criticize it in any way, shape, or form. No criticism. No, 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 no criticism. Or B, they're about a gay. Or three, they're about a big-headed child that is exploring a scary world. And looking at all the nominations, we've covered all bases, which means 
the winner is most likely going to be Life is Strange 2. Purely off the support of Life is Strange 1. Because I genuinely had no fucking clue Life is Strange 2 even fucking exists. Where the fuck? Ah, next up, as you can probably tell, this is a pretty important category for me. Best independent game. And what choices we have to choose from. We have Barbara is You, a homage to the old adventure game for the Atari 2600 with a typographic twist. Or Disco Elysium, an incredibly deep and sharply written CRPG. Or Katana Zero, a psychedelic trippy haze in the mind of a psychopath that sometimes doesn't rip off Hotline Miami. Or Outer Wilds which is a game I didn't play. I don't, point is, why the fuck is the duck game here? Like, ha ha, funny duck moose. Ha ha ha, fuck it. It's funny images on, t on Twitter. Look how funny the pictures of the fucking duck are. What a funny fucking duck. Why the fuck? Next category, best mobile game. Like you give a fuck. Even though you probably should, because it's basically the basic testing ground for all of the AAA industry's shittiest monetization tactics. I mean, it really does say something when Nintendo, the darling of the industry, the guardian angel, he who may do no wrong, basically treats the mobile gaming market like a digital money laundering scheme. Category, best multiplayer game. We have... Not Titanfall 3. Ah, Randy, I know you're angry. Stop hitting me. Ah! <laughs> Soulless, money-leeching Skinner box being sold under the name of a dead man. And... The game that deserves to win. I mean, above all else, don't let Randy win. Imagine what would happen. He'd get the award. He'd do magic at us. Oh, Oh god. Uh, this one's gonna be a bit tricky. Best narrative game. Now this brings up a modicum of debate. What do you give as the best narrative game of the year? Do you go for the most experimental narrative experience or do you go for the most good narrative experience? It's a difficult debate, I know. It's really difficult. I mean, I'm sure every single cunt out there who's actually played Disco Elysium is like, Give me to Disco Elysium! It's the best one there! You just don't understand it, you fucking planet! I'm being a cunt. Here's the thing, I'm being a snarky cunt, because I haven't actually played Like, all the times I've been nice to her, I'm just, I'm just assuming it's good. I don't give a shit. Like, give it to Outer Worlds. It's called a cute lesbian. Fucking give it to that. Best Ongoing game. Am I fucking stroking out? Didn't we just do this? Next up, best performance given. T Ashley Birch played. Ashley Birch played for Varsi? Chloe Price. I mean, as much as Ashley deserves the award for voicing the bestest, purest of girl, it's 100% Mads Mickelson is going to win purely based on his performance of smoking and looking intensely into the camera. Which I'm not saying sarcastically, 100%, but Mads Mickelson, please, yes, please, yes. Ah, next, best role-playing game with... <laughs> 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 Best score and music. Doom Eternal didn't come out this year, did it? Oh god, that fuck. Oh, oh god, that. Ah. The devil trigger. Ah, sports and racing. This is always amazing because. It's the same joke every year, and it never changes. There's always two soccer games, two racing games, and one game that, boy howdy, does it stand out amongst the rest. I literally could not care less who wins. Ah, yes, as everyone knows in the audience, I am a big fan of these strat edgy games. And I know I have ex 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 exclusive, executive, ex ex expensive knowledge of all these games here. Our Age of Wonders Planet Fall, and no 1800s, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Total War Three Kingdoms, Tropico Six, and War Grove. Yes, I know extensive amounts of all of every single one of these games, and I think all of the strategy fans in the audience will agree with me when I say that the mark of a good strategy game 
is the one with the most incest in it. So I'm going to say Fire Emblem deserves this more than any other. Oh, see, it's been a while since I played Fire Emblem. Do they, do they, do they still have incest? Has Fire Emblem patched out the incest? And the last final category, the best 1% game. Go back in five years when VR's not a gimmick. Fuck off. Uh, so what was the overall message of this year's Gamist Awards 2019? I think the overall takeaway of this year's Gamist Awards is that Doom Eternal isn't coming out till March next year. the fucking point. I want to take a moment to do some appreciation to the Patreons. They're really cool and epic. Their names are scrolling down as we speak. Did you know that if you give only one dollar per video, you just pledge a single dollar and you'll get on this list. You'll be credited in the video every single time. <laughs> it's really fucking good. And there's a Discord. People are in it. It's really cool. Maybe not really. It's really cool. Are you okay? You sometimes, I sometimes acknowledge your existence. I've put self-imposed challenges on myself. And that may be why this is so difficult to do. Then again, you're not my fucking therapist. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. I'm fucking good.